Hey Oakham students, Ben Asman here. Today we're doing an indium mediated carbon carbon bond forming reaction. Let's get to it. Indium mediated carbon carbon bond forming reactions are particularly interesting because it's our new substitute for the Grignard reaction. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a perfect substitute for the Grignard reaction. It doesn't work in every circumstance, and indium is quite an expensive metal. However, what's wonderful about it is indium is not even a little bit water sensitive, unlike the Grignard, which is immensely water sensitive. Now, for both the indium and the Grignard reaction, the first step is metallation. This does the extraordinary thing of turning an electrophile into a nucleophile. I can't can't get it across how amazing a thing this is. Exactly how this happens is part of inorganic chemistry and you don't need to know. But you should notice the change in oxidation state. Now we might expect like in the Grignard reaction we would have our newly created nucleophile attack our electrophile from our carbon metal bond and give us our product. After all that is what happens in the Grignard reaction. However it isn't what happens here. The two molecules will have to line up next to each other and will create a small partial weak bond. Then the breaking of the metal carbon bond will force the nucleophilic attack on the electrophile and then open up the carbonyl. The final step is protonation which gives us an alcohol product. To start off, make sure the scale is set at milligrams. Now today we're gonna to be using whey paper instead of the whey cups. The whey cups don't work very well for this and especially when you need precise work. Take the whey paper, crease it in half, you're gonna weigh on that. Zero the scale. Now today we're using chlorobenzylaldehyde and we wanna be very precise with this, plus or minus 10 milligrams at most. If we have too much, we're gonna have a lot of trouble with the purification step. Notice how I scrape a very small amount at a time out of the bottle. This is how you get the precision, especially when you're measuring in the milligrams. Once again, don't overdo this one. And as always, record the exact amount you got for calculations later. Use the weigh cup as a stand, take the weigh paper, fold it in half along the crease, and pour it in along that crease. To ensure that the stir bar can spin as fast as it can, make sure that all the clamps are tightened as tight as you can get them. Have the stir bar gently spinning as you're adding your water. Again, with the indium, you're going to be using the whey paper. Remember, it's expensive, so we don't want to overuse it. 150 milligrams maximum. Maximum. Add it into the rhyme bottom just as before. Next up, allyl iodide. We'll be using the syringe for this one, so please don't stab yourself. Once you have everything added, cap it with a Teflon stopper and get it spinning as fast as you can. This will mean centering the round bottom and the stir bar in the middle of the hot plate. Forward, back, left, right. You may also have to adjust the height. If you have it off, it will not spin properly, it will go nuts, and you will not get the reaction to work. This is to provide sufficient mixing of the different compounds so it would actually react. While this is going, set up your separatory funnel. You have three options for stand. The first is a clamp. That doesn't work. Do not use that. The second is the small brown rings. Those sometimes work. And the third is the small blue rings. Those are the ring stands. Those are the ones you want. Checking back in on a reaction should look pale white partway through the hour. At the end of the hour you're going to add your next dose of water. And then transfer your solution into your separatory funnel. Either use a magnet to remove the stove bar or just make sure you don't pour it into the separatory funnel with the rest of your solution. If you do, there's a magnet on a stick by the reagent on the waste hood. Rinse out your arm bottom first with water, then with diethyl ether, and add these to the separatory funnel. Next, add the acid to protonate the alcohol. Cap the separatory funnel, placing two fingers on the cap to hold it from opening on the bottom. Invert it, shake it, release the pressure, repeat. Once it's thoroughly mixed, Place it back on the stand and let it settle until you see two distinct clear layers. Remember, because water is denser than diethyl ether, the aqueous phase will be on the bottom. Collect this aqueous phase, we'll need it in a bit. Then in a separate container, collect the organic phase, we'll need that too. Place the aqueous phase back in the septoid funnel and re-extract it with a bit more diethyl ether. Notice how I use the ether to clean out the aqueous phase container. Once again, cap, shake, exhaust, repeat, let it settle. Collect the aqueous phase again. We're done with that. That is trash. To the organic phase you have left in the separatory funnel, add the organic phase you had from earlier. Rinse the container with more ether. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern emerging. Neutralize whatever acid is remaining in solution with saturated sodium bicarbonate. And for the billionth time, cap it, shake it, exhaust it, 
Let it settle. Collect the lower aqueous phase. I'm using the same container. It's all junk anyway, it doesn't matter. And now in a separate container, we're gonna collect our organic phase. Next, we're gonna make ourselves a drawing column out of a pipette, a piece of cotton, and sodium sulfate. Roll a small piece of cotton into a ball and load it into a back of a pipette like you're loading a musket. Make sure your metal rod is straight because otherwise it won't go in all the way. Now, when you are loading the sodium sulfate into the back of the pipette, it's unavoidable that you're gonna spill it everywhere. So please, please, Clean up after yourself. You'll need about two fingers worth of sodium sulfate and a clamp in order to mount it. Here's mine. Ooh, two fingers. You will also need a pre-weighed vial for you to put your compound in for next week. Fit it in place and then pipette your solution into the top of the drawing column. I recommend bringing the mouth of your flask awfully close to the top of your pipette so you don't lose anything on the way. Now eventually you'll fill up your pipette. In order to deal with this, and not have to wait forever, you can use a little bit of pressurized air to push it through the column. To do this, go grab yourself a piece of latex tubing, that's the thinner one, not the thick one. Turn on your pressurized air and carefully apply it to the top of the column. For once, I didn't have to speed something up in this video. Repeat this until you've dried all of your compound, rinse out your flask with some more ether, as before. At the end of today, you'll get a relatively thin, clear liquid. You can take your TLC sample directly out of this. And then leave it in your drawer in a place it won't fall over for the week in order for it to evaporate. Next week you'll end up with a very thick liquid. You'll weigh it, test it, but as for today, you're done. Yeah.